Welcome to Friday Takeaway. Oil is always interesting come earnings season, so we have up to bat Bumi Armada and Serba Dynamic. But before that, Things are getting nastier between the US and China, if that was even possible post the Huawei blacklisting. Now China has threatened to cut off rare earth minerals as a countermeasure in the protracted trade war. In fact, the exact phrase used was, don't say we didn't warn you, a phrase China has used exactly twice just before it went to war. As a result, the Pentagon has presented a report to the US Congress in an effort to reduce reliance on China for rare earths, according to Reuters, which are crucial in tech like iPhones, electric vehicles and weapons. But you know who seems to side with Huawei? PM Tun Dr. Made Mohammad, who at a forum in Tokyo said that it would use Huawei's gear as much as possible, dismissing concerns as a security threat. That's a tack that the US is taking to pressure its allies into dropping the China company. Furthermore, Tun M says that we have to accept that the US cannot be forever supreme nation in the world that has the best technology. Back home, it is challenging times for Telecom Malaysia, which, by the way, still doesn't have a CEO after six months. A post currently held by interim CEO Imri Mokhtar. Telecom says it is up to the board and major shareholders, MOF and Kazana, but in the meantime, shareholders are rightly more than a little antsy. But its first quarter profit almost doubled to 308 million, and that was despite revenue actually declining because OPEX dropped, which is never a bad thing. But things will not get easier as competition heats up. And finally, the US Treasury has put the ringgit on its monitoring list by calling it a potential currency manipulator, us meaning, which Bank Nagara has actually strongly denied, adding that the country supports free and fair trade. But there are no consequences really to the economy from being added into this list. This week, we take a look at two oil and gas-related companies that released their earnings, namely Bumi Armada and Serba Dynamic. As oil prices continue to fall on demand fears, it will be interesting to see which of these two actually come out better. After a better set of numbers, Bumi Armada's share price had a very strong week. But is this enough to make up for the fact that it's been loss-making for months? On the other hand, we take a look at Serba Dynamic, which has seen its share price grow from strength to strength, and recent earnings were pretty good, but can it be maintained? Let's square them off. Bumi Armada is an international offshore energy facilities and services provider. It is one of the largest floating production storage offloading or FPSO players in the world with a presence in over 10 countries and is also involved in subsea construction. FY18 was a tough one for Bumi Armada. It ended the year 2.3 billion ringgit in the red. That was largely due to impairments on its OSV vehicles and higher finance costs. Analysts were actually worried at one point that impairments on Armada Kraken would actually impair Bumi Armada's ability to execute the project. And let's not forget that Bumi Armada had to get into talks with its lenders about refinancing its debt, around 1.6 billion ringgit as at the end of last year. To do so, it actually said it would sell assets and it had to optimize its cost structure. As Maybank Research puts it, the need to address its balance sheet was more urgent than earnings recovery. Things seem to be looking up somewhat. First quarter results actually improved by almost 30% on absence of impairment. FPS or Kraken also saw higher operational uptime, which managed to partly mitigate the lower contribution from offshore marine services due to the completion of the Lukoil project. Afin Huang Cap called the results decent and in line with expectations, maintaining both its buy call and 20 cent target price, but does expect softer earnings in the coming quarters because of high costs. But Bumi Yamada's share price did react positively to the news after months of being batted down, but it's still nowhere near where it was a year ago. After the recent results round, you have seven holes, four buys, and two sells or underperforms on the stock, with research houses like MIDF upgrading their calls to buy and Maybank upgrading to hold. Target prices range from 13 cents on the low side to 47 cents. Serba Dynamic is an oil and gas services provider and offers engineering services and solutions for the industry, for production platforms and refineries, petrochem and also services LNG and power plants. Serba Dynamic's recent first quarter earnings were actually really good. In fact, it was the highest ever profit recorded for them, with revenue also reaching new highs. Net profit grew 21% to over 112 million ringgit, driven largely by strong activities from its operation and maintenance segment. And Afing Huang Cap notes that things are gonna get busy, with management guiding that Capex spend is likely to increase to 500 million in preparation for new contracts, and it is already backed by an 8.3 billion ringgit order book. M Invest, however, does note that it's keeping an eye on gearing, which is up to 0.5 times from 0.3 times due to the group's expansion program. Afing Huang Cap also says that while it does expect finance costs to go up in coming quarters, it is not that concerned. But bolstered by positive results, the stock closed at a 52-week high of 4 ringgit 25 cent on Wednesday, but since then has seen some pullback, unable to hold on as it seems to its gains. After the recent results round, all eight of the research houses are giving the stock either buy or outperform, their confidence boosted by Serba's business model. Target prices range from 4 ringgit 65 on the low end all the way up to 6 ringgit 50.